Okay, so uh, thank you. First, uh, a few remarks about yesterday. Uh, yesterday, eventually, we saw that the bound and derived category on Pn is generated by minus n. Oh, so this is what we saw yesterday. And uh, first remark is that what Jake said yesterday, uh, that this complex, the complex the right derived Pn does not necessarily have a, a trivial differential, but as also stated yesterday, uh, it doesn't matter for the claim or the proof. So the differential, the complex, does not have a trivial differential, but it doesn't really matter. And the second point I want to make uh, that this claim is a sort of, uh, so this is one remark, second remark is that uh, this uh, statement is a sort of uh, generalization of the fact that if we have y uh, a projective variety, variety and f some coherent chief, then there exists some integer and such that f can be obtained as a quotient of a finite, finite direct sum of just the twisting chief. And the third remark that I want to make is that yesterday I cheated, but nobody caught me. And uh, I cheated in the sense that I used right-derived functors on this category. And when I stated in the beginning of constructing the right functors that you need enough injectives. But the problem is that the category of coherent sheaves doesn't have enough injectives. Uh, almost never, unless it's fina finitely many points. In general. Uh, so the trick, so three coherent y. What do you mean flats or projectives? Like that? Uh, flats and projective, project, uh, you will always have enough, but that's for the left derived functors. For the right derived functors, you, you need the uh, injective resolutions. Pardon? You need quasi coherent, exactly. Exactly. That, that's exactly the point. So f you always have a, a, the coherent chief as a full subcategory of the, co the quasi coherent chiefs. And this in turn gives a functor from the bounded derived of coherent chiefs to the bounded derived category of quasi coherent chiefs. And in this category, we have enough injectives. This has enough injectives. And if y is a variety, this is true for every scheme, actually. And if it's a variety, or more generally, just uh, quasi-compact and separated scheme, then uh, let's call this f. f is full and, full and faithful. And with essential image, consisting, consisting of the complexes with uh, coherent, coherent cohomology. 
So the, the trick to overcome the problem that, uh, that coherent chiefs do not have enough injectives is to just uh, consider this category as a full subcategory here, consisting of the complexes with coherent cohomology, and then just show that whatever construction you need, you eventually end up back here. And we're going to use this explicitly today. Because what is the goal? The Pardon? What is the goal? The goal of today is to show the following, that uh, in the theorem that if y is pn, and this is uh, some closed Uh, uh, embedding and Y smooth and we have some F1 to Fm split generates uh, the bounded derived category of Pn, then their pullbacks split generate split generate the bounded derive of Y. So, first, uh, split generation is, uh, we said uh, in the beginning that these objects generate this category and that is generate as a triangulated category, so the operations we have are shifting and taking cones. Split generation is to add another operation that is to be able to break up uh, direct sums. So if, you, if these fellows generate uh, some object that is a direct sum of two other uh, objects, then they we also allow to just break that direct sum and take each sum. So uh, why? Uh, so we will show that actually, first uh, I'm going to show that uh, this category always, uh, there is a splitting. So uh, first, I want to say that um, definition, if we have uh, an object, an amorphism, by such that e square equals e then this is called is called an item potent it is split split if there is some other object and morphisms such that this is the composition and F on G is the identity on G. That is exactly like, uh, it's, that is we can think of F as the direct sum of G and some other thing. Uh, so now the claim if Y is a projective smooth 
variety than every item potent in D1 is split. So instead of questions, no. So oh, just erase it. Okay. Again, we're going to use the fact that we can think of everything inside the derived category of quasi-coherent chiefs, and now we have another operation, which is infinite direct sums that, of course, we don't have in coherent chiefs, but for quasi-coherent chiefs, there's no problem with that. And. If you don't mind, I'll do it with a bit more generality than just this case. So let's start with that T be a triangulated category with infinite direct sums. Sum. Double M? I don't know. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, in this setting, if we have, I would like to construct a notion of a co-limit or a co-limit of a very simple form. So let x1, one, x2, x3. be a directed system, directed system in T. Okay, so of, since we have infinite direct sums, we can also form the object of the infinite direct sum of the system. And from this object, we have several maps to itself. Obviously, there's the identity map between them. But there can all, we can also define another uh, map. Let's call it D. Or let's call it diagonal. Which is to take the first summoned into the second summoned by F1, and then to take the second summoned into the third summoned by F2 and so on. So since a triangulated category is in particular an additive category, we can add or subtract morphisms. So we also now have the following morphism. We have the direct sum of i xi goes to itself by identity minus diagonal. And this is a morphism in T. Again, it's triangulated category, so we can complete this somehow to a, an exact triangle. So there is some object that completes this morphism into a triangle. And we call this one the homotopy co-limit of the system X. OK. As a simple example, if we take the directed system X goes to itself by the identity, goes to itself by the identity, and so on, then, of course, the, the homotopy co-limit of this system is, again, x. And if we take the even simpler directed system with 0, then the homotopy co-limit 
is the zero object. So that was very simple. So now we want, if we have some idempotent, so, so let x e x be an idempotent. So we can consider now the direct system x goes to x through e, goes to x through e, and so forth. Since we have uh, this construction, there is some co-limit, homotopy co-limit of x e. It's denoted by y. But once we have an idempotent, we also have another one. So we also have this system. And it also has a co-limit, so we call it Z. Okay, so now the following trick. Take the direct sum of both this, uh, these systems. Obviously, it has also a homotopy co-limit, and it has to be the direct sum of both of these. So this just maps to the direct sum of y plus z. If we put the first two obvious examples together, wait, why is there a zero here? It should be a one. then we just end up at x. And now we can give a map between these two. Which gives us a map here. Now, if you just square this matrix, you get the identity matrix. So this is, in fact, the the, this is an isomorphism. So we obtain that x is isomorphic to direct sum of y and z. From this direct system, obviously, from the first object in the system, we get a morphism to the co-limit. So we call this one f. And from this, we have actually two morphisms, one from y and one from z. So just call the one from y to x g. And we obtain the split f y x. And if you just follow real closely all the map, you see that indeed the composition is e in one direction, and in the other, it's the identity on y. Okay, so now we want to go back to sheaves, and all this applies to the category, the derived category of quasi-coherent sheaves. That is uh, taking some idempotent idempotent in bounded derived of coherent sheaves on y. Not the same y, obviously. Back to y being a variety. And, and then E splits in, in the bounded derived of quasi-coherent sheaves.
Okay, so now we just want to make sure that we obtained an object that uh, indeed lies already back in the original category. So we can take the cohomology of uh, not this one, I'd like to write it a bit differently. And we know that this is the identity. So taking cohomologies, Hence, this is a surjection. So, this, the cohomology of G is a quotient of the cohomology of F. But since the cohomology of F is a coherent chief, then so is the cohomology of G. So, H I G is coherent. And we're done, which just means that G indeed is an object in the bounded ca in the derived category of ba of coherent chiefs. Questions? Yeah. F is just a projection from Y Z to Y. Yeah. Those composition relations on the right hand side you wrote? Yeah, they're pretty obvious. Because uh, F is the one obtained from here. And then uh, a map like this, since uh, it's direct sum, these are two maps, one from Y, one from Z. So just take the first one, and then you just need to compose them, and they all lie. Uh, let's see. OK, so this map, we can write it as some g, g prime, which acts like, uh, which takes some object, g, g, takes some element here, y, z, goes to g, y plus g prime, z. And going the other way around is like this, which is just E, and which is this map, and then G goes to X. They should all fit together like this. And yes. This is going down like this from the first component. So it's just E and then identity. And that should be it. Still on? Yes. No. In order to be in this category, what I said before, you just need, ha need a complex with coherent cohomology. That, that's the essential image inside uh, this category. OK, so now. OK, so now I want to uh, go back to the, the theorem I said in the beginning. That is, uh, we have y uh, 
Pn, y is smooth, and this is a closed embedding, and uh, F1, Fm, split, generate, Okay. It seems enough. Um. Okay. So uh, first, let so if uh, the f again, i is a closed embedding of y into p m. Y is a smooth sub variety. And we have F1 to Fm split generate the derived category of Pn. So if they split generate Pn in particular, they generate the twisting sheaves on Pn uh, because the twisting sheaves all lie here. Second of all, uh, twisting sheaf on Y is basically by definition the pullback of the twisting sheaf of Pn, and since uh, the twist is a line bundle, then this is just the left derived of Opn m. So we may assume that we already have the twisting sheaves on Y, so we can use them now uh, uh, yes, so the uh, so E i, the E i, which are by definition the pullbacks of the F i, generate or split generate, generates all the twisting sheaves on Y. So we may use them in order to construct any object of the derived category of Y. Um, Next. Okay, so let F be some coherent sheaf on Y. Then, as I said at the beginning, so we should put F here. No. That the pullbacks, yes, so uh, if I have generators of Pn, split generators, I can pull them back, I got the uh, set of elements, of objects. We want to say that they split generate, that these fellows split generate the derived category of Y. Okay, so if these are generators, then in particular, they, I can obtain by forming cones and splitting and uh, shifting can obtain the twisting shifts of Pn. And then since I can pull everything back, then I can also obtain the twisting shifts on Y through the pullbacks of the Fs. So what I know for sure is that I can use these shifts to construct any other. Yeah. Pullback is exact, yes. Okay, so next, if it's closed, it's a good Put forward is exactly yes. Okay, so if we have a sheaf, then as I said before, there is some integer and some uh, uh, one R one uh, that we can form. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so I have this one. And now we can take its kernel, which will also be coherent, so we can continue it to R2, M2, Y, and I am running out of space. Wrong direction. 
and we can continue on as long as we like. So we'll continue until one ml rl, and then we'll finally just take the kernel and end this in a long exact sequence. And of course, this E is again coherent because it is a subsheep of, of a coherent chief. And we obtain this sequence. Now, let G be the complex RL1 and L0. Take just this complex with this being the degree 0. So inside the derived category, what we have here, we have here a triangle goes to F, goes to E shifted by L, goes to D. This is an exact triangle D, B, Y. And we have a map here, but home D Y F E L is X L So I didn't say what L is take some L, which is greater than the dimension of Y, and this guarantees that all higher X are zero. So we have the zero map here in this exact triangle. And by the splitting lemma, splitting lemma, or actually it's triangulated analog, what we obtain is that G is isomorphic in the derived category to f direct sum e shifted l minus 1. OK, so by what I said before, we can form all the twists on y. So we can form the object g. And now g is a direct sum of f and something else, since we can split direct sums, then we can also obtain f. And, ah, OK, that was a sheaf. Again? I didn't write, I didn't write it before. I did, I oh, oh, so this isn't the splitting in the, in, in the triangle you got? It, it is. Oh, uh, it uh, is. So, uh, somebody else wrote it. I, maybe I missed it. Uh, 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 the, what does it say? No, it's not the, s oh, no, not, not the idempotent splitting, just oh. uh, the, like a short exact sequence that splits. Oh, oh okay. A, a different sort of, of split. Okay. Uh, okay, and now we just need to show that everything goes through to taking a complex. But again, since we, ha we are working in, in, uh, in the bounded derived category of coherent chiefs on, on Y, every object is isomorphic to a, a really bounded complex of coherent chiefs. And now we can just get them one by one. We just have finitely many coherent chiefs inside each complex. And we can obtain each one of them by this argument. So we are done. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. You have like this syzygy lemma, which says that if you take this kind of true resolution, it has to terminate once you get up to the dimension or something like that. Do you have to use this kind of derived category? Or it's, it's another way of saying that. I think it's basically another way of saying this. Yeah. Um, I mean, does it, do you use the 
this is just like the proof that higher ed was Spanish or something like that? Uh, I just use the fact that for uh, just, I mean, a smooth... You show that you proved in like heart or something like that. Yes, but. it's proved in heart by completely other means, but for... Uh, uh, Yes, it, uh, a smooth variety has a finite uh, cohomological <coughs> dimension. So everything about, about, above the, every cohomology above the dimension vanishes. So uh, I don't remember the, how one proves it at the moment, but just a basic fact that I remember that there is. Pardon? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's exactly. It's basically it's the same thing as saying that that the the perfect complexes are just uh, are all the coherent uh, are all the objects in the what uh, Lena said before that if y is smooth then uh, then the perfect complexes and the bounded uh, com uh, coherent complexes are the same. It's, it's a different way of using the same fact. Any more questions? I'm done. I have more time? <laughs> <laughs>